Who needs water when you got McDonald's Coke? <laughs> this stuff is busting. <laughs> Makes me want to hit the giddy. Welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network. It's Friday, March 22nd, 2024. This is the drop because it's the end of the week. I'm Jay E. Skeets here on the Classic Factory, and alongside me, as always, Tass Mellis. Podcast listeners, this is for you. Next to him, it's the bearded one, a top shot hot boy, Trey Kirby. Hey yo! Hey yo! And last but not least, right over there, making the magic happen, super producer JD. Hello. There he is, and here we are. Shout out to the stream team joining us live. We'd love to see it. Hit the like button and subscribe. Survivor fans, we dropped a new No Buffs episode for you yesterday, breaking down episode four of Survivor 46, talking about Banu. Bye-bye, Banu. <laughs> uh, big debate about Banu right now in the Survivor community. <laughs> Jeff Probst clapping back at people. So we had a lot to say on that episode, so go check that out. No Buffs. It's on YouTube feed. It's on podcast feed. Lots of fun. Uh, on today's drop, Worst of the Week nominees. Whole batch of them today. Oh, yeah. Things were bad. <laughs> so, brutal week. Bad week. Maybe Banu is going to get a nominee. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, we are going to look at the Paris Olympic draw for the men's basketball tournament. And, of course, we got rapid-fire questions that are never so rapid at the end of the show. But before we get into last night's games, we had another wedgie. And it was Zion Williamson with his second wedgie of the season. Sort of in semi-transition with the little layup that stuck ever so gently to give us wedgie number 48 that one happening in orlando on pace still for 59 thank you to wedgietracker.com for that strange night for zion we'll get to a little bit later i wouldn't say bad he's not a worst of the week nominee but uh it's a weird game for him very weird good defense from the magic turned him into a lot of turnovers um but let's start with a little scuffle with Trey Kirby's Bulls, uh, couldn't get to 500, couldn't give us a, a Bulls or back quite yet, because Jalen Green scored 26, and Dylan Brooks scored 23 before he got ejected as the Rockets won their seventh straight game, beating Chicago by 10. Uh, Rockets leading by about nine, with six minutes to go in the third quarter, and DeMar DeRozan was fed up. He was pissed he was mad. off <laughs> and laid a hard foul on Jalen Green around half court. And you're going to see it here if you're watching mm. on YouTube. Really just crushed him, ran into him. Oh, we're going to review that immediately. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. And then exactly. Dylan Brooks has got some words to say. He's sticking up for his guy. You know, that's what Brooks is going to do. And then they get right into it, DeRozan and Dylan. And that's what gives us this sort of on-court scuffle. And then we got Dylan going down with Tory Craig. Two people lost shoes. Yeah, yeah, a lot going on here. And after review, the initial foul by DeRozan ruled a flagrant foul tool, two, and he was ejected. And Brooks was given a technical foul, and he was ejected in his role. Um, do you think they got this right? And do you think, what, what was going on here with DeRozan? That he snapped. This is year 15 for DeMar. I don't think I've ever seen that. Throw a shoulder like that? Very rare. That was... Rockets broadcast couldn't believe it. Yeah, I I definitely couldn't believe it. Dylan took his time getting into it. I wasn't so mad at Dylan, really. (laughs) It's not like he just came at DeMar. It was more of a conversation, really. I'm sure he was saying... you don't walk up behind DeMar DeRozan. It's true. He said, that's an issue. No (laughs) man walks behind another man. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it at all. Shoes and all. This is not a worst of the week nominee. But DeMar was having a bad night. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. DeMar was having a bad night, and like on the two previous Bulls possessions, he got blocked at the rim by yeah. Jalen Green. Looks pretty clean. Maybe contact with the body, but I thought that was fair. And then definitely got fouled by Dylan Brooks on the next time, driving into the lane as well. Went down on the ground, then they run that play, and he just decides to smash in <laughs> to Jalen Green. <laughs> and he hit him pretty hard. I kind of agree with Billy Donovan. I think that foul should have been flagrant. Probably should have only been flagrant one, but then he definitely elbowed Bro- Dylan Brooks in the head yeah. when Brooks comes in and instigates things. So... You combine, even if the first foul is a flagrant one, those two things happening right next to each other, that earns an ejection for DeMar DeRozan. And Dylan Brooks, he definitely did escalate it, but I didn't think it was worthy of him getting tossed in this no. one. Except for the fact that if Dylan Brooks stays in, things are going to get worse because somebody else will go after Dylan Brooks. Yeah, yeah. that's probably true. Uh, you're right. If Dylan doesn't start jawing with DeRozan and they don't go head-to-head and there's a little you know, elbow to the chin and everybody's sort of getting into the scuffle, 
they probably look at it and they maybe just give him the flagrant one. Maybe, maybe, maybe you know, he came in pretty aggressive and he knocked him down and he was obviously frustrated from the place prior. Um, but in a way, Dylan, Dylan got DeRozan ejected is my point, but also got himself tossed. And Dylan Brooks was having the better game at the time. He was on fire. He was 10 to 13 from the floor, hitting some threes. We just said DeRozan was struggling, was 4 of 15. But in the end, it didn't matter because the Rockets won again. 9 and 1 in March, two and a half back of the Warriors for the play-in spot. Seven-game win streak, as I said there. Their longest since 2021. The Rockets are showing some fight, and guys are, you know, obviously backing up their guys that get knocked down. Mm-hmm. You know, good, good fight here at the end of the season from them, literally. <laughs> yeah, we could have seen more of a scrap with guys like Jock Landale on the Rockets team, who throws his body around, probably sets some illegal screens out there, but does <laughs> a lot of good stuff for this Houston Rockets team. Since Alperin Shengun has gone out, he was really big last night. The bench was really big for the Rockets. Mm-hmm. The 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 old guys, the guys that were brought in for Amy Udoka to be that veteran leadership. Landale was great. He even shot a bank shot, a jumper bank shot in this game. What? <laughs> 17 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists. He was hooping, man. He was. <laughs> you know, he is a little bit slow on the defensive end. That's, that's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But he's here in his prime. They signed him to this unguaranteed deal after... This season, same with Jeff Green, who was awesome off the bench, just to see what they're going to become. I think that was the the idea. What are we going to be with Fred Van Vliet's big money, with veteran guys like these around Jalen Green? Uh, it, so that it just brings up the question for me: What are they going to do in the off season with guys like Jeff Green, who was awesome in this game, fourteen and seven, a block? I think called for an, a foul when he blocked Alex Caruso as well. What was up with that? I thought that was the wrong call. But Aaron Holiday as well, fifteen points off the bench. They were great. I know everybody talks about Jalen Green, who is a great secondary creator. I think he benefits so much from playing with Fred Van. Yeah. Just Fred Van, just running Fred Van. Who calls him Fred, Fred Van? Van. <laughs> How do you do it? I cool. do. What is that? What is that name? Brand Van 3000? Anyway. Uh, Fred, Fred Van 3000. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have a great game, but the fact that he just runs the offense. Yeah. Period. Exclamation point. That's it. And then the ball can get swung to Jalen Green where the defense has moved a little bit and then Jalen Green can do his thing. Because you see a lot of bad shots from Jalen Green where he tries to do everything on the outside and create on the outside. And he had a 10 of 22 game in in this one. And this is the best time of his career, obviously, right here, right now. And that's why the Rockets are streaking and chasing, chasing those yep. Warriors and Lakers. Trey, what was more disappointing last night? Uh, that the Bulls failed to get to 500 and you <laughs> could have given us a Bulls are back baby here on the podcast or us picking Kentucky to win the entire men's tournament and them going out in the first round. Uh, honestly, worse? a crushing night all around <laughs> for me. Kentucky going out was bad. The Bulls going 0 for 2 in their quest to be back because they could have beat the Clippers right. last week and they would have been at 500. That was disappointing as well. I played terrible at my pickup run on oh. last night and then I got <laughs> home and I checked the laundry I had done and apparently I had left a tiny tissue in there so all of the clothes I washed were just covered in the <laughs> smallest like oh, I hate that. the yeah. smallest <laughs> little bits mm. of <laughs> of tissue I had to spend an hour just in the laundry room. <laughs> Dandra flying everywhere, smacking it, smacking it, washing yeah. everything back. Oh, yeah. I was so upset <laughs> from 11.30 to 12.30 last night. It was bad stuff, but that's basically what I'm watching for the rest of the season with the Bulls. They're locked into ninth. I mean, if they go undefeated yeah. the rest of the way out and some of the teams ahead of them go on a cold streak, maybe they could get up to eighth or seventh. But I don't see that happening. It's unlikely they get caught from behind. So right now it's literally just can they get to 500 this season? <laughs> They're two games under right now. Got a three-game homestand coming up, but it's the Celtics first. I think Ooh. they play the Celtics tomorrow night, so could be three games under 500. But then they got Wizards, Pacers, then at the Nets. They got to win those three because okay. after that is at the Timberwolves. That's likely a Minnesota win. So <laughs> it's in play. It's in it's in play. Uh, that's their best chance to get be- at getting back to 500. The other thing I noticed last night: another great game for Io Desumu. Yep. A career high again. He set his career high on February 12th this season, 29 points. Then he had 34 on March 16th and 35 last night. Four of his highest scoring games in his career have come in Mickey Mouse March. Mm. Mm. He was the only guy playing for the Bulls last night, though. Went 13 for 18 from the field. The rest of the Bulls shot 39%. Describe Mickey Mouse March for those that don't know. March is a weird time uh, in the NBA, and this is uh, invented by the You Know Ball podcast. Basically, March numbers can look pretty weird and inflated because the good teams, they're still playing. 
the bad teams have basically given up and are running out guys you've never heard of. But there's also these teams that are caught in the middle, like a Rockets, sometimes like a Bulls, where they're still playing for something, even against teams that aren't really playing for something. Right. So the numbers can be a little inflated. Like Mikhail Bridges averaged 29 a game last March. Right, right. And he's had a I, bad season. This exa season. Exactly. March March doesn't always translate to the next That's season. It's kind of what it comes back to. And, Damn. you know, Io's hooping right now in Mickey Mouse March. Mm. Mikel Bridge catching a stray. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, no, well, I mean, I didn't want to say Jalen Green because that guy is the king of Mickey Mouse March right now. I would go with DeAndre Ayton. He's my Mickey March man. Mickey Mouse Mike in there calling him. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm calling him. That's mine, baby. The other, that one's the, mine. The other note from the Bulls is Kobe White did return after missing some games. You know, from that hip strain that he had, scored 13 for the Bulls here. So something to watch um, moving forward. But Rockets, man, they're trying to get into this play-in. So uh, credit to them uh, racking up these wins here, seven in a row. Uh, other Western Conference wins last night. I'll chuck them at you. You can touch on any you want to. Michael Porter Jr., Jokic. You know, turning in big nights. I mean, incredible passes in this game from multiple guys. Nuggets beat the Knicks 113 100. Luka helping lead the Mavericks past the Jazz 113 97. Dallas up into sixth spot in the Western Conference standings. And Devin Booker scored 30. Suns got hot from three. They beat the Hawks. Uh, and you're right. It's very. It's looking very likely. It's nine ten matchup there between the Bulls and the Hawks uh, in the Eastern Conference. But any thoughts from those three games? Yeah, those three games were. All important for all of them in terms of the standings. The Phoenix Suns playoff run is going to look like exactly this to me. All those guys who are shooting threes, this is a jump shooting team, hitting those threes. They had six guys hit multiple threes. Their big three, plus Grayson Allen in, in the starting lineup. That's what they do, plus Eric Gordon and Royce O'Neal off the bench, all splashing threes, multiple threes between two and six for all of them. That's what we're going to watch come postseason. Plus, hopefully, Yusuf Nurkic and your Bull Bull and your Drew Eubanks at the big man can do something. But this is the team. This is the team that was the only team that won two games off the Denver Nuggets last season. So that's what we're watching here. And I'm not sure if Isaiah Thomas, the guy they signed to a 10-day contract, will get out there to help out. But this leading, just watching him get signed brought up the question for me. He's a two-time All-Star. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times when somebody goes and acquires an all-star of, of any capacity in, in any year in any previous year of his career you say we got an all-star do you si say that about Isaiah Thomas to a 10-day contract do you say we've got another all-star because now they have four all-stars no it's too, I know it's a little I extreme I, a, I saw some headlines that say two times they include it they Thomas, make note of sure. it yeah yeah but I guess you got to call it I mean it's but like, it's like you know the thunder traded for Gordon Hayward yeah that's, all -star? That's all, yeah, former All-Star. Yeah. Former All-Star. Play, still plays there. Yeah. Uh, they may let go of an All-Star. He's only signed to a 10-day contract. <laughs> no, no. Fine. They must be loaded if they're just <laughs> saying goodbye to an All-Star. They're loaded. Uh, but, sorry, go ahead. No, jump shots. Uh, maybe he'll help yeah. out jump shooting. But that's what this team is. That's w how they knocked off the Nuggets. What do you think of either of these three games? I thought the Denver game was interesting. The Knicks went on a 12-2 run with their bench in the fourth quarter, cut it to two after the Nuggets had kind of kept them at arm's distance for the entire time. Then Nikola Jokic checked back in with about eight minutes left. Immediate 7-0 run. For Denver, they finished plus 11 in those eight minutes, and the guy banked in a shot from behind the backboard. Yeah, yo, that was insane. That was awesome. How do you do that? How many plays in this game did he have where you're just like, what? Who? I've never seen that. That passed to, pass to Aaron Gordon. <laughs> they don't even care on the Nuggets broadcast no. anymore. They're like, dish to Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> they get more excited like when there's like a – they had a beautiful one in this game where the ball was like, uh, you know, whizzing around. Yeah. Like four guys touched it, ended in a KCP3. Like they got they got hyped by that one. I because think it was it Gordon was, had the pass underneath, right? Yeah. That was nice. Right, right. And it was gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. But you're, this Jokic pass, the one we're talking about, like it's – so many times we use this phrase, I always got eyes in the back of his head, and it's like, we are always embellishing that when we say that. Yeah. This one, you can maybe make the case. I know he knows he's there, because he just has an incredible ability to know where all four other guys are, especially Aaron Gordon. I'm talking about Jokic. But he barely looks in that yeah. one, and then just he just chucks it over his head. You're Great catch. The one maybe. under the hoop. Yeah. Because he had multiple. He had that one yeah, underneath know, the hoop, and then he had a hook skip pass from one yes. post all the way to the other corner. And those skip passes, which are hard to do, he makes it a no look. He makes it a hook pass as well, are so accurate in I comparison know. to other NBA players who pass the ball with their chest. You know, like a chest pass. <laughs> that is on the money. You had 10 in the first half, 10 assists in the first half. He's just so freaking strong. It's like, okay, maybe we'll take away the pass by doubling him up or they just, there's no. 
no recipe for Isaiah Hartenstein or anybody. He's just so freaking strong, too. He'll just go into you. <laughs> That's why I think the horses that he rides aren't ridden, actually. He rides in the carriage. I think he's too big to ride a horse, <laughs> wow. is what I'm trying to say. I don't We've know why. We've never seen a photo of him actually on the back of a horse, nope. have we? He rides there, the, carriage. the carriage, the carriage which follows. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's, freaking, he's an ox, man. He loves he horses, horses that much. He's, he I would want... never sit on a horse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, the one worry, concern, I guess, you want to call it that, Jamal Murray, you know, tweaking the, tweaking the ankle there in this game. Well, you keep your eye on that. But otherwise, if you've watched the, the Nuggets since the All-Star break, I don't know how you've not convinced yourself that they're going to win the title again in these, like, whatever, a couple weeks since since the break. They're doing perfect basketball. Right? <laughs> like, it's sort of nuts. And they have the ability to turn it on in these games, turn it on for quarters, turn it on for minutes, clutch, obviously, and then you've got Jokic and Murray and Michael Porter Jr. balling out. They, they look incredible. Uh, anything on the Mavs? Uh, they had some highlights as well. They had 18 dunks. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with the cool. Utah Jazz, man? They're giving up. Luka Doncic threw an alley oop to Kyrie Irving. Yeah. That yeah. was cool. That was really cool. Threw the oop and then like covered his own head. Yeah. That was like next level Al Horford ducking at the free throw yeah. line when somebody misses a shot. I thought that was really cool. Mavericks have looked good. That was a comfortable win over the Jazz. Like you're saying, they just don't have much defense right now inside. But you throw in the Kings losing to the Wizards. Oh, boy. And that's a bad loss, especially compared or contrasting with the Mavericks winning. So, you know. Boop, boop, boop. Yep. Easy changes in the Western Conference standings. Well, yeah. let's, let's like, well the criticism of the Denver, or sorry, the Dallas Mavericks is they don't play defense. Luca literally got on his chest and dove for a ball yeah. in this one to come up with a steal, and that's the Luca that went to the conference finals. When he leads the way and plays defense like that, it's going to be tough to beat them. I would say I'm a little worried about the Knicks and that Julius Randle has missed two months, and we're here a few weeks from the postseason, and we saw him start off this season after ankle surgery took some time to get yeah. back to the way he shot the ball and so that's a worrisome mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the, the Knicks they did what they could against the Nuggets they now have Julius Randle for a couple months I guess we shouldn't worry about OG Ananobi's new injury to his old injury to his elbow because he should come back from that but I th- there's got to be some worrisome there do you think the Knicks could win a first round series without Julius Randle I know yeah. it depends a little bit on matchups but yeah I think so. I sort of think so too but probably stops there. You're yeah, not going to start advancing too much further. He is important. I mean, he obviously hits the glass, scores a lot. Um, going to need that in a playoff series. But How we'll about without see. Randall and OG? Yeah, that's oh, a problem. No. Yeah, I, I, don't I would so. agree. Especially if they I end would... up like if, – if it ends up being Magic versus Knicks, they would need OG. I... Or Randall. Yeah. Like want somebody to try and guard Paolo. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I was assuming OG would be there in that hypothetical, but good point. Uh, okay, let's spin off of uh, sort of the standings there because we had a fun question by way of NBA.com. There's stable of writers there. The 2024 NBA playoffs, we're less than a month away from starting these things. Here's a look at the current – playoff picture what the seedings would be you see the play in matchups like look at this breakdown here from nba.com for all our youtube viewers the question though that they spun all their writers was what would be your dream postseason matchup if you had to pick one and really it doesn't need to be a first round matchup you can pick whatever you want you can pick whatever conference you want but do you have one that you're sort of like looking at this task hoping that it breaks out to these two particular teams, and why is your reasoning? Well, I just think at some point in the Western Conference playoffs, I would like to see Denver play OKC. I know it's going to be tough for OKC because mm-hmm. these are the Denver Nuggets. That being said, I just like how they're so different. The Nuggets do slow it down. They're 27th in pace this year, while the the, the Thunder are top 10. You know, they're ninth. So it's just fast team versus a slower team. Canada versus Canada, Shea Gilders <laughs> Alexander versus Jamal Murray. No one can stop the Nuggets, but OKC is one of the best defenses in the league. Denver's size is a freaking problem, and it's going to be a problem with OKC. Maybe that's why they went and got Gordon just to help them out as a fourth, <laughs> a, a, a four to come off the bench because they really need size beside Chet Holmgren. That is going to be a problem. We saw it happen to the Miami Heat in Game One in the NBA Finals, and Aaron Gordon that first quarter had six dunks in the first quarter because they didn't know what to do. OKC could it could happen to OKC as well, but I don't know. I just want to see OKC just shed that youth a little bit, and playing Denver would be tough. Okay, good pick. Where are you going here? I TK? got an OKC one as well, and I hope their first round series is against the Golden State Warriors, which I mean, I guess is certainly possible. The Warriors yeah. would have to win two games, and 
Yeah. The Warriors would have to win two games That's to it. get to the eighth seed, and the Thunder would have to hang on to it. But they played four games this year. There was a Warriors uh, two-point win where Draymond Green touched the rim, but Josh Giddy touched the net. Ergo, oh, Steph yeah. Curry's basket counted. Uh, there was an OKC <laughs> blowout. There was an OKC overtime win where Chet hits three free throws to force overtime, and there was another OKC overtime win where Chet hit a clutch three uh, to send it into overtime. You also got the Kevin Durant backstory, though, you know, with him not being in Golden State anymore. Doesn't matter as much, but there is some history there. I also like that it's like two homegrown big threes, the previous dynasty against an up and coming team, kind yeah. of a passing of the torch moment. So if that plays out, I would love to see it. That's yeah. a good one. They're similar styles and that they're so freaking athletic. That would be fun. Yeah. I think Shu is right within this article that really any matchup of the top 10, really 11, if we're including the Houston Rockets, uh, of those teams in the West could be really fun and really terrific. Um, sort of give you any variation would be really good. But I would personally like to see Wolves-Kings in a first-round matchup. 3-6, maybe 2-7. Sacramento won twice in Minnesota this season. Most recently at the beginning of March in overtime. That was the game with no Fox. Malik went. Malik Monk went off for 39 points. Keon Ellison and Mitchell... Those are two guys, if you're trying to stop Anthony Edwards, that I don't mind throwing at him to at least slow him down. They did a great job in that game. They held Ant to 2 of 11 shooting. I like Sabonis against all the Giants there on the Minnesota Timberwolves side of things if some of those guys are back. You have two rabid fan bases that are desperate for a playoff win. Both franchises haven't won a series since 2004. It's like perfect. So somebody would finally win one and uh, you know shed that. Uh, unfortunate label. And it's just like a pretty good clash of styles, too. Obviously, the Wolves are the number one defense in the league. They play a little bit more methodical. They slow it down. I think they're 25th in the league when it comes to pace. The Kings, now it's not as great as it was last year, which then they had the number one offense, but they're like still above average. They play fast. That'd just be fun to see who would uh, come out there. And I think both would go into it going, yeah, we've got this. You know, the Wolves obviously had a great year. They want to advance. Kings were there last year, took the, the Warriors to Game 7, came up a little short with Curry going for 50 in that game. But they believe they can move on. I think that'd be a really, really fun one for those fan bases. So put me down for that one. Kevin Herter out for the season, huh? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Torn labrum. It's Keon time. Yeah. Keon it's, Ellis I mean, I'm said, curious to see how Keon Ellis holds up. In the postseason. In the postseason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got to be able to shoot. Yep. 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 Or he might be left alone. Great point. He has. He has been decent, but yeah, yep. this is his first postseason, that's for sure. So this is going to be big. Uh, other games last night. Lillard, uh, he was great. Another 30-point game. Giannis returned. Bucks held off the Nets, 115-108. Palo, second career triple-double. Magic beat the Pelicans, 121-106. And Kuzma scored 31 points <laughs> as the Wizards snapped a five-game skid with the 109-102 win over the Kings. Oh, Sacramento, you fools. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously Washington now tied with your Detroit Pistons. Yeah. When it comes to wins, uh, I think the Wizards have played maybe <laughs> one more game. But anyway, that's the nut dust bowl. Um, I guess I'll get it started here. Bad news from the Pelican side of things. Brandon Ingram, I don't know if you saw this, injured his left knee in the third quarter while trying to sort of take away a Suggs drive. It appeared as though it hyperextended. <laughs> it went the way you don't want your knee and leg to go. He sort of was down on the on the ground in pain. He had to be helped off the floor. I think they're doing their MIRIs today or you know soon. But that sucked. We had just got done saying, man, look at the Pelicans. Best ball they've played all year. They're healthy. And then unfortunately this. Hopefully it's nothing serious, but it didn't mm -hmm. look good. Uh, yeah, he needed assistance getting off the court. Yeah. I mean, I can't. Uh, like, I hope. I hope it's he can still come back from this because, like, they're like I know they have a lot of still great talent, but you know, like Brandon Ingram's like it's him and Zion as their best players. Like, they're probably not going to win a postseason playoff matchup without him. I agree, and I also think that Ingram becomes even more important come playoff time because he can hit tough mid rangers yeah. with the uh, the height he has, his length, and how high his release is. Like, he can get to basically any shot in the mid-range. It's just a ma uh, matter of making them, and that becomes so much more integral in the playoffs because they'll take away some three-pointers. They'll figure out a way to junk up things and make it tough on Zion, and then Ingram has to be the guy to be able to put the team on his back in the last couple of minutes and get weird, tough shots to fall. So if they don't have him back, that would be... Uh, that's just terrible uh, for New Orleans. And they've been rolling right now. 
And like Brandon Ingram's not even the guy you're worrying about getting word or getting hurt, right? Right. You're like keep yeah. Zion on ice until it starts, and yeah. the other guy goes down. Bummer stuff. It is. And uh, coach said that he got an MRI. And that's oh, he already got it. That, okay. Well, yeah, that that he that he was getting it. It sure seemed like he. It sounded like he he was saying that he was going to get it. So he's already saying that there's a problem uh, with that knee that he's got to get checked on. It didn't look good. No. Not at all the way it's sort of like it just planted poorly and went the other way, like I said, as he's trying to cut off the drive. Uh, Orlando did a great job on Zion. Now, part of that is Ingram sort of going out, but eight turnovers. That defense, man, what are they, third best in the league? Yeah, it was uh, tough. Yeah. It, it was a uh, uh, weird eight turnovers. If you watched every single one of them and every single play, he gave away a lot of them. There's three charges. Mo Wagner mm-hmm. getting up in his face, flopping on one of them. That, that was nice. <laughs> nice flop. Very nice flop. It He's worked out. He's one of out. the best floppers in the league. Very good at flopping. Mm-hmm. Very good. Paolo Boncaro said that the Wagner bros are leaders on their team. Both bros. I guess it helps just being chime- – like, he just likes to – get into things get get a little murky and he gets into it on the floor uh he likes that if franz was doing a nice job of, of setting up boncaro who started on zion williamson pulled the chair on him very nice uh mm-hmm. real early then they go to wendell carter who took a shot in the face from zion williamson no call uh jonathan isaac goes on him went through jonathan zion went through jonathan isaac for a score this is going to be a very difficult postseason to call Zion Williamson for the referees. This is his first postseason. It is just hard to call this guy. He was he was all, allowed to go through guys' faces, and then sometimes he was called for charges that weren't there. So that's why he had eight turnovers, and all 15 shots were in the paint. He's just going to throw some bodies around uh, this postseason as long as he gets there. And as for the magic, this surprised me because we had sort of been thinking they're probably going to be slotted in somewhere to the four through six seed. They're a game and a half back from Cleveland for the third seed. Three and a half back from Milwaukee, so maybe that's too far with time running out here, but the number three seed is in play for this team. Especially with Mitchell out right now. And uh, Windhorse was saying on the Hoop Collective podcast, he doesn't want this to get aggregated, so don't aggregate this (laughs) aggregation. I'm going to tell you, Mm -hmm. he could miss some more time. And it's not just because he's healing from a broken nose that he had to have fixed. Apparently, his knee PRP didn't go as well as it should have, which is kind of why this is going to take a little bit longer for him. So I I think the Magic definitely have a chance because they play hard defense every single night. And Paolo's the man. This guy is made another leap here late in the season. Maybe it's Mickey Mouse, but he's got three double-digit assist games in the last month. Also had a nine-assist game. Four of his seven highest career totals have been in the past month, setting guys up, and he's just getting so much more patient in the lane. He was keeping Zion in his, on his hip in the pick and roll and then just waiting until another guy came, finding easy dishes, just making smart, easy passes and racking up assists. He's great like he's a great player he what he was a rookie of the year last year an all-star this year this guy's got i don't know top 10 player potential probably oh for the sure size the skill and like the brain that he's putting together with it right now i love it and he's overlooked in the conversation i'm just as guilty of it like we're always like oh i can't wait for shea to finally lead a team in a playoff series i know he's been there but to actually lead the thunder um Zion Williamson, you just brought it up. We're always like, oh, I can't wait to see him in the postseason. Paolo, I mean, it's a young career, but like, let's go. Let's get him in the postseason here and see what he can do. And getting that number three seed, I think, would really help the Magic's chances of advancing. Now, I know they might want to play the banged up Knicks. If there's no Randall, there's no OG. That's different. But a lot of people would be taking New York in a 4-5 matchup. They would. Yeah. They won last year. You know, obviously a tough place to play in Madison Square Garden, all that. But Magic versus the Pacers? Magic's versus, you know, maybe, you know, maybe the Sixers if they got back up there, whatever, like a banged up Sixers team, I start to like their chances a little bit more in a potential series win. For sure. Against Indiana. So, yeah. something to watch. Uh, anything else on on Dame there or, you know, the, the Zards? Mm, the Zards. <laughs> the Kings are unbelievable. <laughs> it's it's crazy. I saw Ziller writing about them that there are only three teams that have lost this season to the three worst teams. We're talking the Pistons, the Wizards, and the Hornets. The Blazers, surprise, surprise, lost all three teams. The Nets, okay, they're not very good. And then the Kings (laughs) have lost to all three of the worst teams in the league because they just play to their competition. (laughs) Totally. So... Um, yeah. Any, anything else to add? Yeah, I just like watching Kyle Kuzma when he, when he wants to go off for 40 points. It's it's fun. I mean, he scored, and then they bring the ball back up. It's like he's going one on five. He wants to be a star. I get it. 
he rejected a trade to the Dallas Mavericks that was brought to him this season, he could have been on the Dallas Mavericks. Instead, he wants to be a star. I get it. He gets those IG likes. He's very popular on Instagram. Uh, we got some news. We got some. We BI. got some news. We got some. Shams Sharanya says the Pelicans' Brandon Ingram has suffered a bone contusion in his left knee. Fortunate diagnosis for New Orleans as its star forward avoids serious injury, but he's expected to miss at least two weeks. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's better than obviously what it could have been. Could have been worse, uh, but basically the same thing as Donovan Mitchell. Yep. Bone yep. Same thing as me, if we're being quite honest. Yeah, that's what you got. You yeah, I thought, I thought one week was enough, but two seems to be the recipe. Oh, okay. So you came back a little too early. <laughs> yeah, I was I was limp mode out there. Oh, Jesus. Yes, I was Jesus. limp biscuit out there. Oh, you got to rest. It's got to rest. It's contusion, not conwungeon. <laughs> that's, that's Chill right. it, bro. Chill it. <laughs> See, that's why the franchise has to protect these players from themselves. Yep. You needed some. You needed your franchise. You needed your wife or the other guys to say hey, you, you shouldn't t- be playing. You think she didn't warn me? Yeah, yeah I, know. I know. I was like, I probably won't play. I'll just go and warm up, see how I feel. And then there was ten guys there, so I just had to play the oh, entire night. Now you're forced you know? to play. That's <laughs> just how it is. Yep, it is. Sorry to let the franchise down. <laughs> All right, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, worst of the week nominees, some Olympics basketball talk, and rapid fire. Don't go anywhere. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? A lot of us wish we had more time. But time for what, huh? What would you do? The best way to squeeze those things into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. It can be empowering. You can just simply be clarifying. It's a little clarification in the brain. It can just help you understand what you want to do from day to day. Hold on, is this a therapy session feels kind of good for me just just talking about things what do i need to do yeah yeah i'm helping myself right now i'm starting to feel better just just talking about therapy frankly it has helped me in the past that is for sure if you're thinking of starting therapy give better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash no dunks today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P, dot com slash no dunks. Okay, boys are back here. Let's get right into worst of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, the worst of the week. Several nominees to get to today. Okay. Let's jump to the first one. It's, it's a different one, it's a very off-the-court type of story. Kobe Bryant's Lakers championship ring from the year 2000 is up for auction. Now, specifically, this ring is being put up by his father, Joe Bellybean. Bellybean. I call him Bellybean. Joe Jellybean Bryant. <laughs> I don't know why. crazy names Jellybean. today. Joe Jellybean Fred Bryant. Van and Joe Bellybean. Yeah. <laughs> Bellybean. Bellybean. He was a great wrestler. Boxer? Anyway. Uh, yeah, all the Lakers awesome. got the same ring for Kobe's first championship this is year 2000 and he asked for one for his dad to get made for his dad so this was the extra ring kobe got for his dad the only one he ever gave his dad Hmm. uh let me see how much it's going up for now still up for auction just to let you know 141k is the latest (sighs) bid wow uh yeah that's a lot it comes with a letter of authenticity from his mother pamela bryant is this worst of the week worthy? No, I was just going to ask you, the way you're talking about it, you're like, uh, not, you're not I'm selling not me on sell being it. a worst. No, well, I mean, to, I can give you my opinion. It, it, can they be in an argument? They've had scenarios in the past where they haven't had a great relationship. The, the son-to-father relationship in, in 2016, he told ESPN's Ramona Shelburne that our, our relationship is shit, is what he said. Um, can he give up a ring for auction, I suppose. Oh, so but I would okay. rather say, give it to your granddaughter. I see. What you're I saying. mean, if he wants money, that's that's what the situation seems to be. But I would say yes. So you're almost rather, at like it's sad, sort yeah, of. Yeah, I would. I would. I would assign that word. Which is what a, a lot of ring, people yeah. generally feel like when these rings or things of like importance, I guess, in in the sporting world, go up for auction. It's for money. Mm-hmm. Usually, I mean, that's what it exactly. is. Yeah. Um, and you're like, oh. Uh, it's his. Like, I, I didn't know this. That was this like sort of bonus extra ring. That I, that was news to me. So that's interesting. But yeah, okay, worst of the week. Fine with it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of think the Lakers should buy it. Mm. Too sure. Like keep it as a piece of history. And yeah. Lakers lore. Uh, but 
I did think it was good that Kobe Bryant's like immediate family has his actual yes. thing, which is yeah makes it a little less sad. But I'm with you. Sad was just the word that I saw. Yeah, good word. Um, yeah, so all of Kobe's rings has nothing to do with this auction yet, just to be specific. But the Lakers, I'm sure, could afford this one if they want, if they yeah. wanted to uh, to go purchase it, or they could just remake another one if they really want to. <laughs> uh, next nominee here. There is going to be a new NBA rule preventing coaches from blocking shots. <laughs> what? What did I just say? Coaches blocking shots. If you remember a couple weeks ago, Celtics, Joe Mazzula saw Royce O'Neal, the Phoenix Suns, throwing up a shot after a timeout was called, and he jumped to kind of block the shot. And he said at the time... He said this was setting a tone for his team. He said, so one of my biggest pet peeves is just thinking that a guy's just going to get a free shot. If we're going to hold our team to the standard, then hold the staff to the same <laughs> thing. And then he got on the radio this week, and he, had, he said he has been informed he can no longer contest opposing shots after the whistle, and he expects a new rule to be announced shortly. So I don't know if there's actually going to be a rule <laughs> written to say coaches cannot block shots. If so, they will be fined. But Joe Mazzulla thinks that's going to happen. Do you guys think this is worst of the week worthy? <laughs> to have a rule for coaches not to be able... Because I do I do think this should be nominated. I just think he should have been fined because he was not fined. 50K? You think he should have been fined? Yeah. But, well, why are they making a rule then? Well, are they, first off? Well, it sure sounds like it. Okay. Yeah, the, the, I, do, I, I do not know for sure, but Joe said it, so I'm going on okay. Joe. The thing to me is that, like, this probably should have already been a rule. Yeah. But they probably never thought they needed a rule. <laughs> That's true. To have a coach can't try and block a shot of a player when the play is <laughs> <Right>. dead. <laughs> no one else has thought of that in 77 years of the NBA. Uh, so I don't know. I think that they probably should have just gave him a slap on the wrist and said, come on, man. Get serious. And that maybe is actually what happened because only one coach needs this rule. I've seen, you don't see Eric Spolstra out there playing defense. <laughs> Rick Carlisle's not d up no. opposing players. This is just the Joe Mazzula rule. Yeah. Rula. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, uh, it's something that bothered Charles Barkley. If you heard what Charles Barkley said after Joe Mazzula tried to do that, he said that he shouldn't do that. He could have hurt the player. Well, he could have stepped underneath him. That's true. true. That All is true. unfortunately true and maybe why you have to have a rule because if people kept doing this, someone will eventually roll an ankle and yes. get hurt. That's as silly as that sounds. Yeah, yeah, it could if you continued to do it, but he didn't He didn't touch him. He, did not he didn't touch do him. actually, when you think about it, he really did nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, he didn't. No, he didn't, didn't block the shot. He no. didn't block the shots. He definitely <laughs> jumped to block the shot and then looked at the rim to see if it went in. <laughs> he definitely looked back. Yeah, well, he's like, that's a good challenge. Good, good challenge it. for me. It, it, it's a very, very strange one. And it's probably the only coach. You're totally right that would ever do that. I, I still think he should have been fined immediately because <laughs> because if that's, their, if that's now the, the ongoing rule, what does a coach get? A suspension? If he tries to do something like that, I would say that technical, it, it, technical foul. It makes sense it to attacked. hurt your team. You should yeah. get like a, the other team gets a yeah. free throw. Yeah, something like that. It's got to be. I think I think you should have done it right away because I still think coaches are going to do it, even if it's a technical foul. Maybe not. So I if don't coaches know. are going to continue, knows? I just to, to, okay, if coaches are going to continue to try and block shots after the whistle, <laughs> then that means these players are smart. Uh, they're going to try and start selling that they're hit and foul, kick a leg, <laughs> yeah. go down. Mm. Like if it means like a free throw or yeah. something or a potential tossing of a coach, yeah, yeah review it. I mean, this is, so maybe that you got. I get it. You got to nip it in the bud right now. That's why yeah. you're like, oh, maybe there should be. Yeah, a it should fine. have been done earlier. But it's also hilarious. So why would you know? We want this to continue. It's fine. I want like, I want everything to go after the whistle. Like, player with the ball, like can cross up a coach and try and <laughs> drop him and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> like I want more of this, not less of it. So. Which coach like, is second most likely to try this? Great good question. question. Good question. I do like I do like youth being a part of it. Yeah, Somebody who's agreed. young. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, somewhat. They're Will. all super competitive, but maybe a former athlete that still has yeah. that that gene. You know what I mean? Like Missoula, who played college ball. I, I know. I kind Same. of think it might be Ime Udoka. Mm. Oh, that guy's a super competitor. That's a good one. And like they coach together. And his whole thing is like defense, defense, defense. Yeah. We're trying to. You know, make an identity, set an identity here. Yeah, that's that's a great pick. That's a great one. <laughs> I was gonna say Willie Green, but yeah, I don't think he was really Former a defensive. Athlete, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Out there. Apparently, Jamal Mosley still has hops. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Former Colorado Buffalo, but the LeBron uh, Ime Udoka fight from earlier this year, if you remember that, yeah. where he was pretty mm. 
pretty vocal. He called. <laughs> you don't cuss the right call. Dro- dropped a LeBron. Stop being a bee. Stop being a bitch is essentially <laughs> yeah, what he right, said. Uh, so that's a good one. What about Tibbs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't rule him out. He's got to be top three. <laughs> <laughs> the the all defense guy. Uh, all right. First two nominees off the wall. Third nominee here. The NBA is shutting down the G League Ignite mm. after this season. The Ignite started four seasons ago. Kind of to give players an alternative to college basketball. It kind of filled the void. Each player was paid well, very well, and they got to develop in an NBA ecosystem. But since the name image likeness law has changed how college college athletes are paid, there are a lot more players going to college, staying there for even longer in all sports. Um, yeah. But the G League has expanded on, on, a, on a bright note. There will be an affiliate team for all 30 NBA teams next season. So it kind of changed the importance uh, of the G League Ignite. So do you think this is worst of the week worthy? Mm, I think we saw the writing on the wall with this, with the success of the NIL and getting, you know, athletes getting paid in college. And you sort of didn't need this really much anymore. Um, There's been a lot of success stories, like a lot of obviously high draft picks that have come in recent years uh, and there might be a couple more here even we saw the G League Ignite play Mm -hmm. uh, in um, in College Park but it's not it's not a surprise that they're shutting down it's just it's not really needed in all honesty I don't think with what how they can make money now and you know there's still the option to go to Australia and that's been a big big success down there those professional leagues so I'm not surprised yeah, definitely not surprised. Once the NIL came to the NCAA, you could make more there. So it kind of didn't make sense for the G League Ignite to continue existing because it's an expensive program yes. for the NBA because these guys are making the biggest salaries in the G League. They're not really affiliated with any team. And the results haven't been great. They've been really bad this season because it's like all young guys, not the yeah. mix of young guys and vets that they've had together. Then you look at all the guys they've got drafted. It's awesome that they're getting drafted but it's still taken a long time for their development when they get into the league. Like, the two Mm -hmm. biggest success stories, I would say, are Jalen Green and Jonathan Kaminga. It's year three for them, and they're, like, just now good NBA players. Yeah, that's true. So, I don't know that you're getting better learning in college, but you can't really make the argument that you're getting a better basketball education with the G League Ignite right now. Right, yeah. The the years are a lot shorter than college in the G League Ignite. It's probably one, and occasionally it's two, so you get a longer run in college. You get money over those years now, so that's far different than what this was even just four years ago when they came up with this. You can get paid in college year after year after year after year. Sometimes you see in in every sport, in women's basketball, in football, that they would stay longer because it's an additional year to make money. Mm -hmm. But the players drafted specifically from the Ignite, it is astonishing, three drafts because this is year four that we're getting into here. Yeah. Three drafts, 10 players have been drafted. It's a good amount. Damn, uh, good, 10? Yeah. Like lottery picks or just overall? I would say three, four, four lottery picks. Yeah. Jalen Green, Jonathan Kaminga, Scoot Henderson. Scoot, yeah. Who did I miss there? And Dyson Daniels. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, He's sitting in Niter. And yep. yeah, there's Isaiah Todd, Marjan Bochamp, Jaden Hardy, Leonard Miller, the Canadian oh, yeah. from Minnesota. Hasn't played a lot. He's no. damn good. No. Uh, CD Sissoko and Mojave King okay. are the last ones there. And then a couple were even signed from the G League Ignite, not drafted. Okay, fourth nominee of our five nominees here. Back to the NBA. Grizzlies' Marcus Smart was ejected from a game he wasn't even playing in. This was interesting. <laughs> what? So he was off the bench. He just jumped onto the court. He was like at center court, mad, yelling at the referees, furious with the referees, and got tossed immediately. I don't know what's up with that. What is up with that? Is this a worst of the week nominee? What do you think about Marcus Smart getting furious, coming, basically acting as a coach? I mean, he's yeah. like at yeah. midcourt yelling for his team. I don't know what he's yelling about, really. I mean, he was animated. Yeah. He, you know, he that looked like a well deserved yeah. poly ejection. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it wasn't like one thing he said and then sort of let it go. It was, he looked like he was calling out every single official. Mm-hmm. Like he had things to say and again, pointing at them and use your head, you dummy. I don't know what he's saying, but, uh, <laughs> eh, yeah, well, yeah, this is a fair nominee, I guess. <laughs> I, I think I would hold it higher if it was like, oh man, the Grizzlies needed that win and he hurt the team or so, like, you know, but they're not really playing for much this season. It's a complete throwaway season. So nice to see he's still got the energy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the most Marcus Smart thing of the week. Yeah. And of the season. Well, I don't know. He's been nominated for two worst of the weeks, I think, so far uh, this year because he had the thing where he 
shot a three and then looked down and his finger was dislocated. I don't know if we were doing worse in the week mm. at the time, but that was one of the grossest things that was out there. <laughs> but he still shot a three with a dislocated finger and made it. That's very Marcus Smart. And then getting ejected from a game you're not actually playing in. That's pretty Marcus Smart as well. Yeah. yeah. I would love to know what he said. It's got to get the. I couldn't read those. Lips. Oh, I was gonna say you're usually pretty good at yeah. that. I'm not. And there quite... was a good shot of it. But yeah. He was I mean, talking very fast. Like, I too. thought it was. I thought it was the defensive three call. Give us a freaking defensive three call. Mm. I mean, why is he yelling about that? <laughs> They're camped <laughs> in the paint. Got to get the John Boy media guys to read those lips. <laughs> I, I couldn't quite read them. Anyways, we've got four nominees. Here's the fifth one. This one's just freaking funny to me. Philadelphia's Kyle Lowry. He's playing his old team, playing against the Miami Heat, the team that just dropped him. And he's on the floor. He saw a Bam Adebayo coming by him. So he sticks his own hand underneath his own jersey <laughs> and sticks his middle finger up. But you can't see it because it's under his jersey. Literally just giving a finger to Bam Adebayo. That one's too That's good. Um, I think it's best of the week compared to worst of the week. Worst of the week would That's be awesome. just giving a guy a finger, getting fined, getting tossed or whatever. But the ref can't really say, hmm. You gave a finger there. I think we're going to give yeah. you a technical foul, or, or the league can't fine him. I don't think he's all. Uh, he's obviously doing it in in jest too. Like he's he's a gesture. He's uh. It's like the time. Who was it? Was it was it Vince Carter patting Mo Pete on the ass, or the other way around? And then he got like, but it like got into a big like, <laughs> a slap fight. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it was like a playful, yeah. like you know, they, you know, former teammates and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, that's is what this sort of reminds me of. But would be interesting if Kyle Lowry was pissed off with an official over a call and then he could and then he gave the middle finger under his jersey to an official <laughs> what do you do in that situation i guess mm -hmm. you, was, you could you still get a tech i guess you would <laughs> but you can't see it <laughs> we're gonna get another new rule <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no gesturing under your jersey <laughs> yeah that's a good one that's though. funny that was a great one just just for the humor Five nominees, you tell us who was the worst. Kobe championship ring being put up for auction by Joe Jellybean Bryant. A new rule for coaches blocking shots. The Ignite <laughs> going away. Um, they are be they're gone after the end of the season. Marcus Smart, ejection, and Kyle Lowry fingers. Mm, okay. Stop one. <laughs> Get your votes in. Who gets worst of the week? Uh, before we get to rapid fire, FIBA held the draw for the Paris games on Tuesday, slotting the fields for the 12-team basketball tournaments. The men's field still has four spots that will go to winners of qualifying tournaments in early July before the Olympics open on July 27th. But here are the draw results. Group A, it's Australia, world ranking fifth. Canada is in Group A. World ranking seventh, obviously coming off that bronze medal in the FIBA World Cup. Then it's like two... Qualifying winners, one in Spain, one in Greece. That looks like a tough group to me, or, or at least could be. Group B is Germany, France, Japan, and then the Olympic qualifying tournament winner in Latvia. And then we have in Group C, U.S. They're paired with Serbia, so they will be playing them. And South Sudan is also in that bracket. And then the Puerto Rican qualifying tournament winner so again uh, those will happen a little bit later those final four spots but do you have any reaction tk here to the 2024 paris olympics men's basketball draw i actually kind of felt bad for you guys welcome back to the olympics you're in the group of death yeah that, yeah. that could that's gonna be yeah the qualifiers bloodbath. are good it's oh, like yeah. either gonna be Giannis or luca um in yeah. one of the qualifiers and then probably spain from the spanish yes. qualifier so that is a that's gonna be a loaded group that's huge you're gonna have three or at least two of the top five MVP candidates yeah. this season playing in that group right there. And what, two advance? Yeah, yeah so... To the, to the knockout so, stage so, of the yeah, Olympics? Teams yes. will play three group stage games, obviously, within your group. Top two finishers in each group advance, and then the two best third-place teams also advance to the quarterfinals. So, it's mm -hmm. you know, you're playing point differential, you're yeah. playing all that. Um, but you're right, that group A task... That draw was not kind, I don't think, to us. It still depends on who comes out of those qualifying tournaments, but it's likely going to be these really good teams, like Trey said. And yes, for sure. As he said, Yanis against Luka, essentially, to get to the, one of those last spots, hopefully. Hopefully for hopefully, Greece, they yeah. get to that. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of teams. And the fact that there are 12 teams here versus what we just watched in like the World Cup, formerly the FIBA basketball tournament, is awesome but it's very difficult uh, it's it's fun because every game really 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 matters mm -hmm. compared to the world cup where you know that there's going to be a lot of teams that advance 
you know which teams How are going to How many teams were there again? There were at least 24. I was, was going to say, was it 30? 32? <laughs> uh, there's a lot. Was yeah. it eight divisions of four? Maybe. I think it was. Might have been. I think so. Top two all advanced. So many more teams. Yeah. yeah. Way more. So many more teams. Right. And now these tournaments, uh, uh, there's four, which are going to be awesome in Spain, Latvia, Greece, or Puerto Rico. Uh, they're going to be fun. Even that, that Spain one that you mentioned, they're probably going to play Larry Markin in, in Finland or the Bahamas, which is DeAndre Ayton, Eric Gordon, Buddy Heald. That's a pretty good team. Order your uh, beds now. <laughs> <laughs> Get on it. Yeah, Don't leave it till the last point. minute, Aiden. That's a great point. Figure it out. <laughs> an air. You cannot sleep on an air mattress for this tournament. No. <laughs> Spain's going to give him an air mattress. He'll be playing in Spain. Oh, yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's a wild one. But, yeah, these tournaments, these, these lead-in tournaments are a lot of those teams which played in the World Cup. Greece is going to be playing Carl Anthony Towns if he plays in the Dominican right. Republic. Uh, and Luca. And other te- and Croatia, that, that's, that one is a real tough That's one. a great point. These four qualifying tournaments, sometimes you'd be like, well, I don't think any of the medal winners will be coming from these. That's possibly not the case here. Because they, like, they, they, some of them came up short, had disappointing you know, performances in World Cup and stuff like that. But some of those squads that could get in through winning that qualifying tournament could definitely make some noise in the actual Paris Olympics in terms of knocking off some of these teams. So I'm getting hyped for this. When I saw this, I was like, yeah, I'm ready. I know it's it's not that far away, like the Olympics. I love the Olympics. You yeah, know, of yeah, course, it's very yeah. soon, and it's going to be like a decent time difference this year. You know, it's not that bad. What are they five six hours ahead in Paris? That's not too bad. No, at all. no, it'd be great. That's great. Yeah, that's what I first thought. This is going to be good. Yeah. This is going to be a good tournament. I hope we get invited. That's not going to happen. <laughs> um, but also, the other tournaments are... Uh, the the biggest laugh of the episode from JD. We <laughs> <laughs> get invited to the Paris Olympics. That's a dream. That's a dream. But well, you've yes. been. You've been to keep one. Keep dreaming, Tess. Yeah, yeah I will keep dreaming. dreaming. Um, but honestly, the other tournaments, as, as we were talking about, the qualifying tournaments are July 2nd to July 7th. So It's like right before the Olympics. Yeah. Jeez. And yeah. it's not too long after the NBA Finals if you know some of those guys play in the NBA Finals. I saw Hollinger tweeting about that not long ago. Some of these guys, if they elect to play for their national teams and their team goes far in the in the postseason, they're playing a lot of basketball this yeah. summer. Like yeah. if you go all the way through, you know, June stuff like that. Yeah, even if you make it to the, the conference finals, yeah, it's still like okay, you get a few weeks off, but you probably want more than that. Yeah, uh, we're excited for the Paris Olympics and all the qualifying tournaments. FIBA sickos over here. Uh, before we go. Rapid fire? You got some questions? Oh, sure. Let's do it. Just checking the price for the latest uh, bid for the Kobe Bryant ring. It's still 141 if anybody cares. Okay. 141K, eight days remaining. Okay. Just so you know. Just so you know. Okay, first question. This week, Greg Popovich confirmed his French wines are older than his French center. Here's Pop. All my Bordeaux's are older than Victor Wembenyama. That's a true statement. What he said. That's a, I believe. That's a hell of a flex. <laughs> that's a cool flex. I gotta be honest. Specific. All of my Bordeaux's are older than Wemby. That sounds yeah. like a rap line. Yeah, sounds yeah. like an action Bronson lyric. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Right. Specifically his Bordeaux's. You <laughs> yep. wanted, wanted to mention the French ones. Uh, what's something you've hung on to for over twenty years, like pop skeets? Uh, good question. Brought it in. No, oh, baby. I think it's almost twenty years exactly. Maybe nineteen, but the original. Oh yeah. Oh wow! Basketball Jones shirt. Look at the look at the condition this is in. That's, That's so pretty damn black good. Still. And I wore this quite a lot uh, <laughs> back in the day. Not as much now. I got a whole bin of all of our old merch. <laughs> but uh, yes, our guy Thody made this design. Um, again, this would have been 2005, maybe six. But we're you know nearly 20 years. Yeah. So there you go. That's a good logo too. It's awesome. Look at, look at this. The Basketball Jones dot net. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Dot com taken. Yeah. Couldn't get the call. Nah, we're cash. Net. Every shot is cash. <laughs> Gotta go with dot net. Yeah. So you stopped wearing it? Is it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I got to a decent. point. I mean, this was an American apparel shirt. Jeez. We yeah. were splurging back in the day. Oh, well, hell yeah. Um, it got to the point I just have too much Basketball Jones sure. starters and no dunks merch that I had to. Oh, yeah. I want to keep it all to put it into the Hall of Fame one day, but uh, <laughs> I, I had to remove it from the wearing rotation. Mm-hmm. So it's, I have, a, I have a legit giant bin of all, I think I have almost every one of our shirts. I'm missing a few, but. I got the Pooh God somewhere. I got the Pooh God. Pooh yeah. God. I got the Pooh God. I love that shirt. I got all our OG ones. I think there are, I, th- well, there's no dunk shirts that I don't have because we have a lot yeah, of them. Same. We got a lot of shirts, yeah. yeah. But anyway, good shirt. Thanks, Sh- Thody. Good design. Anyway. 
Trey, something you've hung on to for over 20 years. I think I still have that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I washed mine poorly, though. You suck at laundry. laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I know. Uh, I'm, a, I'm average at laundry. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm it happens. improving. It happens to everybody, man. You got kids. You got tissues. You just made me, flashback, hey, point. made me flashback to some scary diapers in the wash. <laughs> so they just break up. Oh. No, uh, I nobody like likes that. that. Diaper Daniels. <laughs> These are yeah, diaper Daniels. <laughs> anyway, something, <laughs> something you've held on to. Uh, I was laughing. Earlier this week, you were talking about you have a pair of like fake Air Jordan 11s. Right. And you're never getting rid of them. Mm hmm. I got a pair from high school that I'm also never getting rid of. They're like yellow Ooh. at this point. Oh, I yeah. wore them all through senior year of high school basketball because I played for a team that was purple and white. You couldn't find a lot of purple shoes. Skip school to go get them. Oh, thanks, Mom. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I'm going to hang on to these forever. And yeah, they're only like a half size too small. <laughs> my, oh, my feet haven't grown a whole lot since I was 17 years old. <laughs> uh, size 11, those ones were. <laughs> so they've gotten yellow just because they're fakes. No, mine are no, real. Oh, they're real. But they, they, they just got yeah, that's like, yeah, that's a like sweat. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Wet, got it going like a turbo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, JD. Uh, mine is not quite 20 years old, but um, my kid is turning 18 this summer. Uh, he was born after we started this show, believe it or not. Yeah. And the one uh, thing that I still have is uh, now our bar over there. Uh, it, it was his change table. <laughs> oh, wow. That, I remember that. Uh, converted awesome. it into uh, our bar. We, we had it in the living room for a while, but then we moved it into the classic factory. Right. So that's mm. where I changed both my children's yeah. diapers. And now it's just a sexy uh, coffee uh, <laughs> slash bar. Yeah, and I know you're wondering. Country. Yeah, we put a little splash of Jim Beam. Oh, every, every morning. <laughs> every we were sponsored. Well, it should be Jack Daniels, I guess. <laughs> Tennessee honey really hits in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> we had a we had a Beam deal for a second, guys. We did have a Beam. We did. Yeah, we had a right. happy hour. Oh, brought that's to you by right. Jim Beam. Oh. That's that was not, that's where that Jim Beam came from. Actually. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. So uh, and we had a neutral deal. <laughs> we had a neutral deal. Thank you for the side. That there sign will is. be here for 20 years. <laughs> hey, man. It's a neon sign. You're going to send me a neon sign. I'm going to put it up. Totally. Who would you like? Well uh, which beverage would you like next to oh, uh, Guinness? Gin I knew you were going to say Guinness. that. Yeah. yeah. Come on on board, Guinness. Yeah. How, you know how many? How much free advertising we've given to Guinness over the years? Yeah, that's it's crazy. True. Yeah. True. We can get camera shots off the set. That was a nice <laughs> shot, yeah, Jamie. Oh, thank very, you very, very cool. <laughs> I, yeah, I also just had a... a not a pleasant flashback to when you got the Jim Beams delivered to your door. I didn't like that, actually. <laughs> What do you mean? I mean, yeah. it's nice to have alcohol delivered to you, yeah, sure. sure. You got to sign for it. Like you that. have to sign for it. Show yeah. your ID, yeah. Yeah, it's like people coming and just... <laughs> it was like a brown bag. It was just a brown bag. Oh, that's right. I didn't know what was in it. I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> what no a nice surprise, though. That was kind of yeah. nice. Yeah. But no one told us it was coming. No, yeah. that's right. Yeah. ding dong, here's a brown bag yeah, on your... that's true. You're like... <laughs> it's like oh, somebody <laughs> dropping off some shit, literally yeah. poop. Early yeah. days of the athletic, we just got stuff randomly. Yeah. Yeah. Ding dong. Oh, <laughs> okay, next round bag. <laughs> <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts is celebrating spring by renaming their small iced coffee the Short King. Okay. Uh, it's always a small. Who's your NBA Lord for Quad? Or your NBA <laughs> Short King? Nice. NBA, oh. Yeah, that was a fun one. Oh, come on. I mean, I assumed it didn't need to be a current player. The, okay, it can the, be anything in the, the sport. The NBA's anything. greatest, shortest king is Muggsy Bokes. He was good. Guy's 5'3", under 140 pounds. He played yep. 900 games in the NBA. That's the thing that blows my mind. It's like, not that he just made it <laughs> and would have been like, wow, this guy's 5'3", he played 40 games. That was fun. Yeah. Guy played, he played well. He was on one of the most beloved teams of the 90s with Larry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning and the Hornets. He averaged 11 points and 10 assists per game one year in show. That's pretty good. So Muggsy, the truest short king of them all and uh, awesome guy too we met him at a, a yeah. Jim Beam wait no, yeah. no, no Jack Daniels that was Jack Daniels, Jack Daniels. I, just, I just had to google it to, to figure out the Tennessee whiskey yeah, yeah no. that was Jack Daniels we met him at a Jack Daniels event and like Taz and I did something with him and Robert Ori and he was awesome like he was so cool like in the stories he was sharing um, so I'm going Muggsy Tyrone he was listed at 5'3". I think he was 5'3". Oh, was he's he five, tiny two? man oh, so no small more, no more than 5'3". we had him on all-star live stream oh, yeah. in yes. Toronto 2016. Oh, yeah. and, like he was one of the last guys that we had at the end of the game. So like we followed him out. <laughs> Good views. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're like a foot taller than <laughs> more. Easily, man. Yeah. It's, crazy. it's it's wild walking and you're like, 
This guy was in the NBA for a decade. That's what I mean. Yeah, that is amazing. Uh, what do you think his career high for points in a game was? I looked it up because I was like, 14. Okay. I gotta go higher. Cause he played played, played a lot of minutes sometimes, like 25. Yeah. You're very close, Tess. He tapped out at 24 oh. in one game. That's awesome. Not bad. Oh, in one game, yeah. 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 Oh, you were thinking. <laughs> I was, I was thinking per average, game. Yeah. Oh, oh, 24. That's a lot. Yeah. Though. Yeah. 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 Pretty guy. I mean. He, he, he couldn't shoot the three all that well, but he was a playmaker. He didn't, and he was awesome on defense yep. too. For a guy at five three, your NBA short king, Trey. Well, that is the shortest of kings, no <laughs> doubt about it. But my personal short king is Allen Iverson. You know, he's listed at six feet, oh, yeah. probably not six feet tall, and he, it's between him and Isaiah Thomas for best short guy in NBA history. I would have to say, and. Honestly, Isaiah Thomas probably hasn't beat for accolades and championships and all that kind of stuff. But AI was the first non-bull who was my favorite player in the league. And mm. it kind of was like the perfect timing with Jordan uh, retiring from the NBA the second time, right as Iverson was really, really starting to ascend. Obviously, there's that awesome moment of AI crossing over Jordan uh, in his rookie year, even before the cornrows. Iverson, man, great player. Yeah. Very yeah. short. <laughs> and that's why LeBron probably said on his recent podcast with J.J. Reddick, him and Steph, the most influential guys since he started watching ball. Yeah. So it's affected a lot of people. J.D., you're short king. Uh, Going to keep it simple. Nate Robinson. Hey. We one. have a personal history with him a little bit. I mean, <laughs> we've crossed, crossed paths every once in a while. He he interrupted a uh, an interview with Skeets and uh, Steve Nash. Oh, wow. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Just showed up. Yeah, uh, playing and soccer. And that same weekend, we saw him front row center playing in Steve Nash's soccer tournament. He scored a goal. He ripped off his shirt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Guy, incredibly athletic. I'm not talking about just how he looked with his shirt off, but just playing soccer, he was just dominated out there. Could have played football. Yeah. 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 Like in the NFL, probably. Yeah. Easily. Wasn't he like an incredible cornerback? I think so, yeah. football. Yeah, okay, maybe not easily, but he, I mean, look, if he committed himself to it, the guy is a super (laughs) athlete. Yeah. Yeah. And we we ran into him again, uh, no season required tour, I think, or maybe it was the same time. But anyways, he was talking about the show Heroes. And how much he loved uh, the cheerleader, Claire. Remember that? He's, he's like, love my Claire Bear. Oh, yeah. love her. Like, thousand Heroes. mile stare, you know? Like, he just sort of got to him. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was talking about Heroes, which was Heroes. on at the time. It was, <laughs> it was the big show at the time. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Anyway, listen at, listen at 5'9, but when we saw him, didn't seem like he was 5'9. No. No. He was a little shorter. These guys yeah. are all, they're, when they're that small and they're in the NBA, they're all getting an inch or two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Last one here. After Sabrina Ionescu took on Steph Curry at the three-point challenge, Ionescu said they both talked to other players, including Caitlin Clark, about com- competing in future contests. Hmm, promising. Mm-hmm. Which event, from anywhere, basketball-related or anything else, would make a great battle of the sexes? Skeets. Well, last night, I went to a movie theater to watch <laughs> the greatest movie of all time, my favorite movie, from 1986. The BMX movie, Rad. That's right. I went to a movie theater last night in Atlanta, Georgia to watch Rad. It was incredible. It was fucking amazing. One night only, I assume. One night only. It was showing like around the country in select theaters. Uh, Why? why? I I don't really know. I think it's because they're doing it with a bunch of old movies. Okay. Now, a lot of them were more like 40th anniversary or 45th anniversary. Like the never ending stories coming in July, if you want to go see that. And, um, you know, Gone with the Wind. Like classic movies and cult classic movies, which is what Rad is. Mm -hmm. But you're right, Trey. It wasn't, you know, it came out in 86. So it's weird. (laughs) Just a weird year to celebrate it. Who cares? I was celebrating it. Point is, I took my two. God kids, they're twins, uh, Andreas and Zara, so male and female. Now, this was a risky move, I'm being <laughs> honest. Like, I'm taking them, again, to my favorite movie of all time. I'm like, right. I, I hope they like you this. You better like I'll it. I'll be devastated if they won't. <laughs> but, you know, I wasn't putting any pressure on Of course they loved it. Yeah. I mean, I fell in love with this movie when I was basically eight years old. Yeah. Uh, but I'm watching it going, Lori Laughlin, who's like the main female character, and she is a BMX rider in it. But she doesn't compete in Hell Track, which is the final event. <laughs> it's all male riders. Mm, wow. But she's like supposed to be the best in the world. Right. So it's like, how is there never a rad two? 
Get out there. Where Mary. where uh, where she's battling crew, her love interest even. Maybe there's some conflict there. I should have wrote the script. We should Maybe make it. Up. We yeah. should just make it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> weird thing after the movie because of this like you know celebration for Rad Day. <laughs> uh, it was like a Zoom meeting, right? Yeah. It wasn't live, but it was Ed Helms, who's like a diehard Rad fan too. Oh, okay. He was hosting Crew Jones today, Bart Taylor who is the, uh, he's an Olympic athlete. I don't right. know if you guys knew that, but like, he was a gymnast back in the day, but yeah. he's in the movie. He's the he's the, the protagonist. And then, um, the uh, uh, what's his name? Something Schwartzman. Jason? Jason? But not Jason, his oh. brother. Oh. And I learned in watching this for a little bit that Jason Schwartzman and this Schwartzman, their dad <laughs> produced the movie, Rad. Oh, okay. And what's her name? Talia, uh, Talia Shire. Talia Shire, who's in Rad as well as the mom. Oh, okay. Jason Schwartzman, that's his mom. Wow. Yeah, he's a Coppola. I didn't know that. Yeah. He, yeah. Ne- Nepo, baby. Yeah, but I didn't know she was his mom. I didn't I didn't know that. So she, Was she Cagney or Lacey? What? Tally Shire? No, that's... No, she, well, uh, she's, she's in Rocky. She's in Rocky, yeah, and yeah. she's in The Godfather. Yeah. Right. yeah. Who am I thinking of? And Anyways. she's in the three greatest movies of all time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Rocky, Godfather, or, Rad. Where was this Zoom meeting? Like, after the movie? It was like, after the movie, yeah. Uh, like a Q&A sort yeah, of. Yeah, sort of. Like, uh, yeah. It was a little weird. Yeah, I I actually like the I, I wanted the kids to end on a high note, so right. I was like I, I was like I'll watch this online later. Yeah, we can't. You're not gonna sit here for 30 minutes and watch four <laughs> old dudes talk about a movie from '86. <laughs> like you already just watched a movie from '86. Yeah, yeah. Let's end yeah. on a high note. So anyway, Battle of the Sexes, L track. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> wow, great names. I'm in. <laughs> you, you dropped a Bart a Schwartzman Bart. brother, <laughs> Bart Lori Loughlin. Yeah, man. I think Lori Loughlin did needs some image rehab she could use a she, rad too yeah she could use a rad too mm, she absolutely right. could Gone through some things <laughs> seen some things uh trey um i would like to take a page from survivor and have a metallica versus taylor swift versus <laughs> great they can both play their first songs like their first chart topping songs Taylor Swift starts with We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, a song about not getting back together with your ex. And Metallica could play One, a song about a soldier who has his limbs and jaw blown off by a landmine in World War One. Damn. Damn, this would be a great versus. <laughs> and just going back, and, back forth. and forth. Back and forth. <laughs> like half the crowd divided, Swifties, and then oh my just God. Metallica diehards. Tellies. What are they called? And like the whole point would be to see like which artists can get the other fan base to like oh yeah, yeah this is oh, actually not bad yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be taylor yeah she, taylor's gonna win the, the country Metall- taylor's gonna win the metallica <laughs> people before metallica. before metallica <laughs> wins over the oh, I don't taylor know, people man. are you kidding they're 13 years old girls they're not gonna <laughs> yeah they got a lot of rage i mean yeah i suppose i suppose i don't know she can get some grown men who like country music. She's got the country side of things yeah, early in folk, her career. Yeah, yeah. She'll, she'll, she'll get some. Got pop. She's got a lot. You're right. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. She's going to win them. <laughs> She's going to please the whole room. That what? really would be like art. Well, I was going to say like when Run DMC and Aerosmith teamed up back in the 80s. <laughs> kind of, actually. Similar. I, I mean, well, sort of similar. Like Metallica is actually like 20 years old too. But, right. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. A clash of styles. Trey said it. Does did Metallica fans have a name? I don't. I, don't, I, I mean, they must. Metalheads. I don't, yeah. Just, I just see. Our, our free puppets? fan club is yeah. called Metallica fans. <laughs> Metallica. Boring. Yeah. Metallica fans. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, JD. Metallica is a terrible name for a band. Oh, wow. They don't really call their fans any special name, oh. but the closest would be Metallica family. Uh, oh, family. 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 Oh, more than fans. Wow. Okay, Ben. <laughs> family. JD, you got one here. Oh. Yeah, Best well, battle of the sexes. I have a battle of the sexes. I have it. All Star Saturday night, uh-huh. right after the three point challenge between uh, Curry and uh, Ionescu. Ionesc- How do you say her name? Ionescu. Uh, Ionescu. I would like Caitlin Clark to come out. I would like uh, Clay Thompson to come out. And the LED floor turns into a pickleball court. You knew oh, I was geez. going there. Oh, you no. roll out a net, oh. and here we go. Just a quick pickleball net. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That would actually be that so great. funny. It would be so funny. awesome. You have the LED floor. You could do it a little, literally anything. Yeah. And uh, I say do that and cancel the dunk contest. <laughs> wow. 
and like don't tell people you're canceling the dunk contest right. until that <laughs> very second. I, just to just to make the announcement, ladies and gentlemen, tonight uh, in lieu of the dunk contest, there will be a pickleball battle of the sexes between <laughs> the Splash Brothers, uh, Caitlin Clark, and Sabrina Inescu. Oh man, that would be very fun. Uh, and uh, I, for one, would be thrilled. And I think I would give it to Caitlin and Sabrina. Wow. Wow. Hey, look. Don't tell them either. Right? <laughs> what do you mean? No you? prep. <laughs> no prep. It's like, guys, you're playing pickleball. Get in there. Here's a paddle. This is how you score. Get going. What about, forget like these incredible shooters. What about, you know, unfortunately the dunk contest field, it's been a little lackluster. So pick the four dunkers, get yeah. them in, and then it's just right before they think they're going to dunk, say, no, you guys are actually yeah, playing, playing pickleball. pickleball. Oh, we said dink contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end it there. Rapid fire, not so rapid, but hopefully a classic. You tell us. Leave your boys a five star rating and review. Hit the like button, subscribe. We're in the dog days of the NBA season. Everybody all in love with the college basketball. That's fine. You're watching your brackets, both in the men's and women's. Hopefully it goes well this weekend. But we'll be here on Monday to talk about the NBA. There are a ton of games on. <laughs> it's like a million the NBA The season games. continues. It indeed. does. It does yep. indeed. Only the sickos are here right now for this stretch until we get going for the playoffs. But we appreciate it. So we'll be back on Monday. Winners and losers of the NBA weekend. And uh, yeah, make sure you follow us on all the social media channels. We've got some fun shorts uh, coming in the next couple of days as well. Till then, Cobra Bros. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, you guys are great fans. But we need 608 more of you to get to 100,000 by Monday, hopefully. Wow. Oh, that's a push. That's a push. <laughs> but it can be done. Can it? Can it? If you listen to the podcast and you don't subscribe to the YouTube channel, there's there's got to be at least 608 of those. Right. Just come over. Just a click. Subscribe and then go back to listening to the podcast. Click on somebody else's browser that's in your house. Easy. You don't have to do anything. We've really. got more than 608 watching live right now. Yes. Right now. So if each of those people tells one person to subscribe... We're there. Done. Easy. Brace the weekend, people.